everyone, Matt McCool with Motion VFX, and we just released a brand new transition pack for DaVinci Resolve. This one's called M Transition Movie. And not gonna lie, this is probably my favorite transition pack we've ever released. I mean, it just has a really solid, unique blend of super cinematic and versatile transitions that you can use in any kind of video. So can't wait to show you around. Let's go ahead and jump inside Resolve. Okay, so once you have M Transition Movie installed, it can be located up here in your effects library. Under video transitions, motion VFX, you should see M Transition Movie right here. And from here, you can browse all 50 cinematic transitions in the pack. You can also turn on the hover scrub preview option here. And if you have your playhead over a cut on your timeline, this will let you scrub through each of these transitions and kind of get an idea for how they're going to look. Now, before we run through some of these transitions, I just want to point out if you have a clip like this, where you can see this cut point actually highlights in red, this indicates that this is actually the end of that clip. So if I were to try and add a transition, you can see that it's only going to let me align that transition to the left side of this cut point. I can't put it on the center. This is, of course, because transitions need additional frame handles on both sides of the cut point. So I can hit T on the keyboard and this will give me the trim edit tool and I can just slide this clip over here to give me additional room on the right side of that cut. And from here, I would be able to add a transition either with the center alignment, the left alignment or the right alignment because I have additional room on both sides of this cut. And if you click on the cut point here, you can actually slide this back and forth and see the overall range that you have to work with. And this also determines the maximum duration you have to set for those transitions. So over here in my timeline, I have sort of like the cyber crime scene happening over here. And I wanted to use this to show you some of the transitions that are a little bit more on the uh, glitchy side. So for example, we've got this static transition. Now this one will kind of create this effect like the TV is in between channels. And in the inspector over here, you can also adjust certain parameters about the transition here. So we could lower the alpha, which will reveal the footage underneath. You can also mess around with the scan lines as well as the noise and you can really get a lot of different looks. And sort of similar to that one, we also have this flicker burnout transition. Now this one's pretty cool. It will create this light leak and sort of splice the two shots together with these little stripes. And you can adjust the seethe right here to kind of get different stripe patterns. You can even change the speed. And if you don't like the light leaks, you can turn those off. There are two of them. And as a reminder, you can also apply a transition to a clip at the beginning of your timeline, something like this, where we're going from black to the shot. And what this will do is kind of give you these black stripes. So it can be kind of an interesting way to start a video. And I really liked this film tear transition for these two shots together. Kind of looks like a security camera glitching out. And you can see it does add a little bit of color. So over here, the overlay is adding some of this warmer color into the transition and our footage is already pretty blue. So we're going to get the kind of this green effect. So we could kind of push this closer to blue if we wanted to. Uh, we could even make it black. And now it's sort of similar to this first transition without the uh, light leaks. But I think I am actually going to kind of push in some of that blue color. I think it looks nice. Okay. And we also have a bunch of transitions that kind of create variations of a flash. So we have this explosion transition, which kind of wipes out the frame, giving you this like explosive cut. Flash is kind of similar. It will kind of flicker a couple times. So I thought it really looked nice on this shot right here with the lightning because we're getting a couple of these flashes with some camera shake. And what I ended up doing in the intro was kind of using this shot as a transition. So I just made this very, very short. And then I use the raise transition to go into the shot of the woman getting out of the car. And I just made sure that these transitions are basically back to back. And the raise will give you kind of these vertical streaks on all of the highlights in the frame. So it kind of looks like it's being motivated by that lightning. And of course, with this raise preset, we can also change the direction using the angle slider right here. We can also increase the length as well as the glow. And if we didn't want the camera shake, we could disable that here or we can dial down the power a little bit. 
Okay, so for this shot, I thought something that kind of wipes across the screen would look really nice. And we have a couple transitions that will do that. So we have this one called Pass By. Now this one's pretty cool. It will actually wipe a picture across the screen like this. And in the inspector over here, you can actually change this to different options. So really popular transition, especially for like chase scenes. Might not work in this example, but super useful to have something like this ready to go. Now similar to that one, we also have this one called Shade, which will kind of wipe across this black shadow across the screen here. And I like this one because it also moves the footage in the direction of that swipe. So if you look at it, this footage kind of drifts down into this corner as that shadow wipes across the screen. And when we change the angle, it will adjust the rotation of both of those shots. So if we just flip this at a different angle, you can see now the footage is moving that way. Now this one's really cool, this double wipe transition. This one's kind of similar, but it kind of looks like a photo slideshow. It wipes across this little black bar and reveals the new shot. And then the black bar returns to its original position. And with this transition, of course, you can flip the direction. And just as a reminder, you don't always have to use a transition to take you from one shot to another. You could also make a cut on a clip like this and apply a transition like flashback, for example. And this just gives us a really interesting effect. And we're still on the same shot, but it can be kind of an interesting way to enhance a moment or emphasize something happening. Now I'm going to try this echo preset. This one kind of gives you this disorienting effect there. Okay, so moving on, I want to show you this double exposure preset's pretty cool and it works really well, especially if you have shots with a lot of contrast. Let's try it over this shot right here. It basically creates like a double exposure type of effect. And in the inspector, you can either decide to use the shadows or the highlights, which will kind of give you the inverted effect here. So in that case, I think the highlights actually look better. You can also choose which footage does the masking. So by default, it's set to footage B. That's the shot that we're going to land on. But if you wanted, you could also mask away from your original shot. And there's also a softness slider here so that you could sort of fine tune the mask if it's kind of looking a little wrong. Like in this case, if I lower the softness all the way, we're getting kind of jagged edges. Doesn't look as nice. So I might want to increase that softness quite a bit. Now we also have this transition called premonition, which is pretty similar. This one also will use contrast, but instead of doing a mask type of fade, this will actually blur based on the luminance values of the upcoming shot. So this one's really cool. Actually, let me try this on the previous shot here. So you can see it's starting to blur in these brighter areas where that lava is going to eventually make its way. You could also invert this range. So this will blur from the opposite zones so you can really see that detail inside of here so you play it back really fast i just think it looks really cool okay next uh, i want to show you this movie freeze frame preset now this is a transition that i see all the time in movies especially when you're trying to emulate a photo being taken or something like that it kind of flashes and then freezes on a specific frame zooms in and adds some nice grain and then eventually flashes back out to get us to the next shot and speaking of transitions that kind of look like a photo is being taken, we also have a couple others like the camera shutter. This one will give you this whole iris right here. So you combine that with a really nice sound effect and you have a very nice photo transition. We also have this iris transition, which is kind of similar, but it'll actually give you two different apertures. And of course, with these, you can adjust their position using the inspector over here. You can also turn on the fusion overlay right here and you can physically drag these control points around to adjust those irises. Now, lastly, I want to go over some of these transitions that include a drop zone. These will allow you to add in additional photos inside the transition. It's really cool. And I ended up using one on these two shots here. So I liked it because it kind of made it feel like he's reminiscing on his childhood or an old memory. So I ended up using the memory flash right here. Now, when you drag this on, you will see these drop zone areas and you can go over here into the inspector and browse for a photo. 
It doesn't work with videos, but since this is such a fast flickering effect, photos are going to work just fine anyway. And with these photos, you can always move the position around like this. You can scale them up, you can rotate. And if you have a portrait photo like this one, for example, uh, by default, you will get something like this. It'll just preserve the entire photo in its portrait orientation. But rather than zooming in like this, because if you do this, you will lose some detail. There's this aspect mode drop down menu right at the bottom, and you can simply just switch to the other option. And this will automatically crop anything that's portrait and fit it into the correct aspect ratio. And it still keeps the bird photo just fine. It didn't have to adjust this one at all because it's already landscape. So let's go ahead and add additional photos here. And when we play it back, we have this. So just a really nice way to kind of overstimulate your audience and show kind of the impression that your character is going through a lot of memories. And I also wanted to show you that these do in fact work really well in vertical timelines like you see here. So let's go through and just add a couple transitions. Let's try new ones this time. I like this glass transition. This one kind of swipes across the screen there and it looks like a lens or something is almost sliding across the frame there. And you can see it works perfectly fine in the vertical aspect ratio. And with this one, we can also change things like the angle here. And you can see when we rotate this around, it will shift both pieces of footage as well as the mask, the glass in the middle there. And we could even increase the slide distance a bit. Let's try another one. Let's try a split screen right here. Now this one will kind of slide in the other shot and kind of pause in the middle. And you can see you can make it go horizontal or vertical. You can also switch the footage out like that. And I also wanted to point out if you are working in a timeline that is actually wider than 16 by 9, like right here I have a timeline that is set to 2160 by 1080p. And if I use a transition like this one here that has a built in texture, you can see that it kind of crops that texture on the left and right side. So we have included the aspect mode switch right here. And in this instance, if I just switch this to letterbox envelope, then this takes care of that crop for me. Now, in most cases, if you're working in a 16 by nine timeline or a vertical timeline, the pan and scan option will work fine. But in this case, because it is wider, I would need to switch this to the other letterbox option. So yeah, that's a wrap on M Transition Movie. It's available right now on our website for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro. So I really can't wait to see what people create with these transitions. So if you make something cool, definitely tag us on social media. We'd love to check it out. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.